First, let's look at the code for ESP32 uh, as to how we can connect ESP32 to Wi-Fi. So if you were to connect this to an IoT project in your home, you'd probably have a WPA2 personal kind of Wi-Fi. So all you need is the SSID and the password. So you can enter those either in a secrets file or um, at the top of your sketch. And then you just uh, use this line in your code where you say wifi.begin with the SSID and password. So this stays in your setup and then uh, you can then fetch the time and make sure that the time is correct from an NTP server. And this is kind of the minimal code that you'd use uh, when you want to connect something to the Wi-Fi. Um, but this is not as easy when you want to do uh, enterprise level stuff. Um, so as you might know, I work at University of Michigan and the Wi-Fi that is provided here is WPA2 Enterprise. For the problem I faced was trying to connect um, ESP8266 or the ESP32 to Wi-Fi. Um, I was having a lot of trouble. I couldn't get ESP8266 to work with the Wi-Fi, uh, but uh, then I just figured out how to connect ESP32 to the 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi. So this is a enterprise level um, Wi-Fi service and uh, each enterprise is different. Each company is different. So each company could have different uh, procedures for you to connect. Um, I'm just going to walk you through what I did and how I read the documentation that was provided to actually connect the ESP32 to the Wi-Fi. Um, so basically, um, the first step for me is to go through M setup. Um, so here you have to put in your MAC address. So this is what the M setup looks like. So basically, if you had an iPhone or a standard Windows or a Mac PC, you can just follow through uh, the steps that are outlined over here. But for other devices, it's kind of very complicated or it's different from what you do over here. And basically, um, I just went through the detailed um, setup instructions. So in the detailed setup instructions, basically you would require the MAC address for the device that you're connecting. And I'll just go over how you do that for ESP32 or ESP8266. So this is the minimal code uh, to actually retrieve your MAC address. In this case, uh, all you have to do is uh, disconnect your Wi-Fi and then just print wifi.mac address. So it kind of prints the MAC address and you would take this MAC address and put it in your enterprise's uh, uh, setup. Um, and uh, ESP8266 and ESP32 do give you an uh, option to use custom uh, MAC address. So in this case, you can define your custom MAC address in the top. So you can use this function ESP Wi-Fi set MAC for ESP32 to actually set uh, the MAC address that is defined at the top of the sketch. So you can use the original MAC that comes with your ESP32 and uh, set up, uh, go through the setup uh, for your company, or you can then set up a, a MAC address manually over here, and then uh, you can go through the re registration process. So why the registration uh, process is important is because uh, the IT department wants to link this IoT device to you, uh, so in this case, you would uh, link with your username and basically you can manage if you want to provide internet access to a device or just use the internal network um, inside your um, enterprise uh, Wi-Fi or network that is uh, defined for your domain. Uh, so basically, um, these are the setups that are required for me. Uh, it could be different for each company, but anyway, um, I just showed you how you can retrieve the MAC address, you can set your own MAC addresses, and then go through the setup. Here is just a screenshot of what the setup looks like. Basically, you can uh, enter the values that are uh, requested by your company. It took me a while to find the correct instructions so i have put the links over here so once you click on it you end up here so in this page what they do define is our ssid on um, the wpa2 enterprise um, wi-fi authentication the radius server the intermediate ca certificate or the root and the root ca certificate so this line was very very important for me it took me months to actually figure out what was going wrong so here different clients may require one of both of these certificates if these values are in text files, rename them as CAR files. So this, this is actually uh, very important because 
all I needed was just the Incommon RSA certificate and I had both of these and it was not connecting. So basically I just uh, found the correct instruction that said probably you just need just this one guy. Um, and then you use your uh, username and password and we don't have any domain. So this is the code that is shipped uh, with ESP32 library. So basically you put in your SSID, you put in your identity and the password, and then you'd use these special three lines where you set the identity, which is the same as your um, username. Um, and uh, you would set the password and basically add these two extra configuration line and then start your Wi-Fi address. So basically once you'd set this up, it should be able to connect to the Wi-Fi. So this is what um, expressive gives you as the example, but um, it did not have the information on how to add the certificate, um, which was critical for me in order for ESP32 to connect to the enterprise uh, network. So here I show you how I did it uh, for ESP32. Basically, I defined my 2.4 gigahertz SSID, um, put in my username and my password, uh, put in the contents of the certificate in here, and then I added this one critical line over here, which is you want to set the CEA certificate to be the in common certificate that is provided by my company. Um, so I had to add this particular line and then use the exactly same configuration that is given over here. And basically it just connects to an NTP server to confirm that it's able to get uh, the time and this was successful. So basically um, this is just a exercise in how to read uh, the documentation provided by your company to actually connect to WPA2 Enterprise. And just uh, me trying to figure out this one line took a few months, um, but uh, hopefully this is helpful to someone who is struggling. And um, I would say contact your IT department to actually figure out what is needed for you to connect to your uh, Wi-Fi uh, for in your enterprise at your work. So I have put all the code into GitHub so you can uh, use this as a reference um, and uh, see how you can actually uh, uh, connect to the enterprise uh, Wi-Fi for ESP32. So all the content is here in GitHub. So happy connecting your IoT devices at work. And uh, hopefully in the next few videos, I can show you what I'm doing with these IoT devices and um, probably moving a few things to work and see how we can actually do a lot of things remotely and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, uh, come back next week for a new video.